All right, everybody. Coach Rob here from Talent Coaching. We're going to look at the new Zwift Custom Training Plan Builder, or Training or Workout Builder, as it were. Um, this is a new option, actually. Today is uh, December 15th, and um, yesterday being December 14th was the day that Zwift launched their Custom Workout Builder. So, what we're going to do, we're going to launch Zwift, and we're going to wait for it to boot up here. And we should be able to walk our way through a custom workout build. Assuming Zwift decides to start up. Uh, now, it's worth noting, I'm doing this on... Uh, my MacBook Pro, this is the computer that I typically use to actually do a Zwift session or a Zwift workout with, and um, there's no a t key plugged in, there's nothing plugged into it. Um, I'm not doing a session right at this moment, but um, I will, yeah, I will do a uh, session shortly enough. Yeah, I know. No A and T. Okay, great. Thank you. So, here we go. Um, Login-wise, yes, you guys can see my email address. Yeah. Um, and here we go. Myself logged in. This is for some reason really slow this morning. So there we go. Now we're logged in. Yes, we have no cadence devices. We have nothing going on. So we're going to go up here to select a workout. It's asking me if I've tried a workout yet. Uh, and this was a workout that I created recently, but I can create a new one. I can edit a description can figure out exactly how I want to do this. But let's just say for safety's sake here, I want to take this and I want to drag it in. Now, the way the Zwift Workout Builder works is you have a starting power here, you have an ending power here, and you have a duration. All right. So it also calculates underneath here stress points and your total workout duration. Uh, the stars thing is basically how many intervals you get. It gives you some information on how um, you're supposed to perform. So let's do this. Let's do something like this. Because I feel like punishing whoever does this workout. Oh, that's zone 6. We don't want a zone 6. Uh, delete. How do I get that out of there? Get out of here. We want a zone 5. We're going to do some zone 5 work today. <clears throat> now, for those of you who've watched my, um, my uh, videos or listened to some of the information I have done on um, different VO2 max style training, this will be interesting to you. So, you'll see kind of my thought process when I do something <clears throat> here. So, let's start from the beginning. We have a 10 minute warm up. That 10 minute warm up might be a little bit too long. So, we're going to actually drop that down to about 7 minutes or so. Now, next thing we're going to do, we can come on over here. We do not want a 5 minute VO2 max interval. Let's do about 3. And power wise, let's start at 105% of threshold. Cool. Let's move to our next. We're going to do a rest period here, equal amount, three minutes duration. Let's do about 80% of threshold. Let's move to our next zone five interval. We'll go again, three minutes. We'll go 110% of threshold. Now, my major gripe with this, this workout design is there's no way to drag and drop or drag, I shouldn't say drag and drop, but drag to select the actual <clears throat> duration or the numbers under power or anything like that. 
So you're kind of stuck, <clears throat> you know, just trying to click and see what happens. Now, for, um, for this, there's an interval key over here. Um, it should go without saying, you have zone 1 block, you have a zone 2 block, a zone 3, a zone 4, a zone 5, and a zone 6. You have the warm-up block, you have a cool-down block, you have an interval block, you have a free ride uh, section here, and then we have a text event, which I will get to in just a couple of minutes. Um, but anyway, here, we're looking at doing, for example, I feel like doing 2040s. <clears throat> Not 20 minutes. 20 seconds on. And um, I feel like doing 40 seconds off. Great. So we got a block of 2040s. Let's add a couple more. Power. Let's do 120% of threshold, the upper end of zone 5 into zone 6. Now we have a 105%. Uh, resting power we could do instead of 50 let's do 70 all right now we're firmly in zone th uh, zone 2 in that case we're close to zone 3 I could actually change this to 75 percent and uh, actually it puts zone 3 as 80 percent above good for it it's a little different than my zoning so now you have a seven minute warm-up a two three by uh, two by three block of zone 5 work and then a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by um, eight by one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do eight. Let's do eight blocks of 20, 40 on and off. Now we're looking, we're going, geez, that's only 33 training stress points. That's not much. Well, let's add another, let's add another block here. Let's bump this up. We're going to do 115% of threshold here. And we're going to do it for three minutes. And then we're going to go right into our 20 on, 40 off. That'll add some more training stress really easily. So now you have a progressively increasing zone 5 build into some intervals. And uh, now let's see what do we want to do here. 30 minutes. This is a really good workout. Really good short zone 5 type workout. Let's do a, uh, let's do five minutes of uh, decreasing cool down. So we got 35 minutes. That'll take about 45 training stress, give or take, depending on if we hit all of these numbers correctly. Now, something interesting we can do, we can do a text event. We can drag that over and drag it right there. And we can say, we can say recover. And right, so that'll tell me that point for 20 seconds it'll display the message recover I can put right here uh, offset time offset let's do uh, oops let's move it to right there are you ready to cry yet? And if I put it right here, I can change the time offset, I can move it, I can put it there, I can say two, two, go. So now, basically those will talk to me throughout the workout. So now I'll actually have some vocal cues here. These are basically, if any of you are familiar with the Sufferfest, these are essentially the similar on-screen cues that you're going to see with the Sufferfest. Right. So it's a very, very cool style of workout. And you can see here you have eight star potential, so uh, that'll tell you how well you executed this workout. If I want to change it, I can call it. Once again, the thing that bugs me, and it's a beta, of course, everything in Zwift really is a beta right now. Um, but the thing that bugs me is there's no way to click and drag to select multiple letters or blocks of text. Um, let's call this one 3 by 3 by 8 by pain. 
Let's make pain capital. Okay. And of course, the author would be me. Description, you can enter in here. Uh, three by three increasing the O to max intervals and eight by twenty uh, forties. And we can tag this workout as an interval workout. Can add custom tags to it if we so desire. Can do all kinds of nifty stuff there. So, it's a short in, uh, overview of the workout editor. And of course, it's saved down here. The workout is saved. Now, uh, I'm not entirely sure here if you can actually. I haven't explored this yet, really. Oh, and another interesting thing you can do, you can actually change your functional threshold over here in the corner. So if you want, say you have an FTP of 300 watts, um, it's called 302, it'll raise the numbers that you're required to hit. If you have an FTP of 200 watts, um, it'll lower the numbers you're required to hit, which is kind of a cool concept. Now, um, I'm not entirely sure if you can really share these workouts uh, yet with anybody. I know you can duplicate them, you can copy them, uh, etc., etc. But I really don't know if you're able to share them or how you would be able to share them. It would be a really cool concept at some point for people to be able to share their Zip Zwift workouts with everybody else so that you can actually go about doing uh, somebody else's workout if that's what really interests you. So there you go, a uh, really quick uh, Hit workout. We can uh, we can ride, and up we go. Up in the left hand corner, you'll have your uh, your interval sets here, and uh, with your wattage numbers that you're supposed to hit, and uh, your star rating as well. And of course, on your right hand side, your regular um, your regular Swift interface. And right now we're in Richmond, so interesting, really cool feature, really neat feature. Glad it's actually out. And uh, really, really nice to see that you can actually develop and design workouts uh, as you see fit and as you want to do them. Um, it's worth noting that the free ride option in there allows you to just free ride for a period of time uh, if that's what you so desire. Um, so if you want to hit some of the hills on the Richmond course, you can do a 20-minute free ride session in the beginning to warm up and uh, then go into your intervals after that. So nice, uh, nice feature. Really love the fact that Swift has managed to come up with this, and uh, it's really cool from a coaching standpoint to be able to, you know, have a platform where people can take the workouts that I've prescribed to them and put them to a virtual, uh, a virtual, well, a virtual universe, so to speak, uh, where they can do those workouts while still being motivated by being on the road with other people. So, quick interview or quick overview of that. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Post them on the Tailwind Coaching Facebook page, uh, at CoachRobDC on Twitter, or, G or email me, CoachRobDC at gmail.com. Thanks. Look forward to seeing to you, talking to you in the next video, and we'll see you soon.